This is a Big Facts Network exclusive. Live from Fab Week 2024, Big Facts has officially touched down. Big Bank, Baby J, DJ Scream, and it's only right if we're in Oakland. We got to chop it up with the one and only Filthy Rich. Filthy Rich, yeah. what's up, what's up, what's up, my brother? Yeah. Thank y'all for having me, man. Appreciate Scream, you for the you conversation. Been, Appreciate you for the conversation. You know how what I'm saying? Been? Everything, everything is blessed, man. We all blessed. Man. I see you've been turning up since the last time I seen you. We, go, we got to keep it going. Yeah, got to yeah, keep man. it going. Got to keep it going. Yeah, now yeah. we here. We here to learn everything we can about. I've been there a few times. Yeah. And, uh, you been you been in the Bay before? One time. You been there before? And this your time. first time. Yeah. We here to learn everything we can about the Bay, man. Tell us yeah. the real, like specifically Oakland. How is it coming up in Oakland? Like What's the going on? Touristic shit. The, the real shit. shit. Uh, yeah. You know, if you know someone, you good. You know, that's anywhere you go. You got what I'm saying? And uh, for the out-of-towners, you know, it's a um, new hustle right now going on called Bippin'. Oh, that car so, shit. Um, that car shit. It's, it's way breaking into cars, you know, out-of-towners, rentals or whatever. So they breaking in cars while niggas in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But um, <laughs> at the same time, you know, just keep your personal belongings in a hotel room. Yeah. You know, um, to, they doing it now to where people parking with their windows down. Damn. Some people might leave their doors open it's just so. You know it ain't nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it ain't nothing up in there. You but think? Um, you think when like uh, you think when like the when the Warriors went away and and the Raiders and all the teams went away and shit, it was it like made the city like worse off, like economically. Economically, pro yeah, most likely because all the money leaving. But you know, what I was just speaking on that's been going on for years. It's just starting to really now get like, you know, like publicized. Mm -hmm. Niggas been doing that shit for years. Niggas get rich off that. I done been on the phone with niggas. They all, oh, man, they got this rapper jewelry. They got this amount of money. I couldn't believe people leave that type of stuff in a car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah nah, nah. Niggas get caught slipping. Oh, I done yeah, left yeah. shit in the car before. Yeah, I'm talking about like, credit, like four, five Rolexes, 200,000 in cash. Like, yeah. like, left that. Like, yeah, it was just crazy. Just... Like, shit you'll never think of. It's yeah. leaving the car. But, but to the extent, you just slipping at that point. You gotta respect the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Five rollies in the car. Yeah, shit like that. They calling, trying to sell this shit, or trying to sell it back to the artists, or it's it's, cra it's cra all type of crazy shit. Like you, whatever you think of, people then guns, shit, money, shit. They they break. They know you out of town. They're breaking the car while you in there. Take Damn. take your whole suitcase. Damn. Yeah. Damn. So what's the so, bet? Go ahead. Where you think that came, like where you think that stemmed from? Like what? just somebody. You know, so niggas it, fucked up. Niggas yeah. hungry. You know what I'm saying? No, no, like, it been going to that point where niggas it, don't want to hustle. It been going on. It's just that when niggas start seeing that nigga, you can get really money off that shit, and everybody start fucking with it. And everybody just start fucking with it. You, you know, word of mouth is a motherfucker. Yeah. Like, you, you got what? And, 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 and they might be looking at it like it's, it it looking at it like it's so easy. Yeah. You know? Like just to break a window and I can get this. Yeah. And I ain't gotta pull a gun on no nigga yeah. or try to tussle with no oh, nigga no, them or nothing. No guns and everything. Don't Man. try to take your shit back. Don't try to grab your shit. Oh yeah. It's, it's, so what's some what's, what's some good shit? What's some positive shit? Positive going on? shit. Um, as of right now, us FOD, Oakland. You know what I'm saying? East Oakland. Um, I got like 15 artists right now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the whole East, and like we what they talking about? You know what I'm saying? We got a variety of different styles, you know what I'm saying, different neighborhoods, and um, should we pushing. And then I can't remember exactly, like, how far back this was, but I know you had um, a hundred pair Red Bottom initiative. Giveaway, yeah. Giveaway for the, all of the people that had at least a 3.5 GPA or yeah. better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any plans on doing anything similar to that in the near future? Um, I haven't done anything similar to that, but every year I, I do um, charity events. Okay. From um, back to school, Thanksgiving, Christmas, every year. I've been doing that for like the past eight, nine years. Cool. Yeah, I did That's that because up. I just had them shoes sitting in the house, and I was looking at them. And, um, you had 100 pair of red bottoms sitting in the house? I had more than 100. But I mean, you know, it, it accumulated over years. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't buy them all in one year. Yeah. <laughs> so it accumulated over years. So I'm like, man, I'm tired yeah. of these shoes. So it was just something I, I had put my foot in my mouth. I said I was going to do it, so I had to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, you, what you think? Um, the biggest advantage and disadvantage of living up here doing music? Doing music? Um, it's really no, it's no record labels here. When people think of... Um, That's the disadvantage? Yeah, so, so and, and no radio play. 
Uh, so, like the South, where y'all at? Y'all got urban, um, um, urban radio stations. Yeah, we don't have that here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like whatever they plan is already written out to be played. If we gotta like, like a, a, a big DJ really gotta try to break an artist, and they really can't like. Mm -hmm. The overhead ain't gonna let them do it. Have the tools. Yeah, and then we don't have like a real big nightlife. You know, uh, in Atlanta, oh, wow. yeah, like y'all yeah, got yeah, strip yeah. clubs and break records. We don't have that type of shit here. So, so how like, you break records? Yeah, it ain't no breaking, man. We got, we got, we got people trying to do little after hours, like uh, Boog Pesos, uh, DJ Millions, a couple other guys. They doing like underground, underground hip hop after hour things and. And playing records that was hot in the streets or whatever, but that's only going so far. Mm -hmm. So what I tell my artists is like, you got to get out. You gotta, you gotta branch out. Yeah, you gotta get on the road. You gotta do press runs. You gotta go shake a hand and meet a friend. You get what I'm saying? You gotta go get in these DJ faces, especially if you're trying to break a record. Like get hot where you at, and then branch out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I know that you were um, you were planning a tour. With Fab and like some of the other like oh, yeah, you West Coast artists, oh. like I know it's like long, long, long oh, yeah. ago. But then you had an unfortunate situation yeah. where you got locked up, and yeah. you know what I'm saying you had some shit go down or whatever. Yeah. So what exactly led up to that, and what changes did you make to make sure that that same type of situation didn't happen to you again? Uh, so I always wanted bigger and better, just in life. Period. Mm -hmm. Not even just in music. So. I'm like, okay, cool. I got some relationship with some guys from Oakland that's doing what they're doing. Let's put that's something popping. together. Yeah. So we put something together. But a lot of things got to be funded. Studio got to be funded. Videos got to be funded. Flyers. Yeah. At this time, we're pressing up albums, um, posters, whatever. So, I mean, they ain't had no nine to five, so we're still, still on the block. Right. So, so you might catch a couple hiccups. You might catch a pistol case. You might catch a dope case. Right. So... That's what that led up to, you know, trapping, uh, you know, I got kids to take care of, you get what I'm saying? Right, right. I ain't had nobody um, put me in the studio and pay for it or pay for my videos or shit like that, that, you know, we got to pay for as in being a rapper. Yeah. yeah. What you say is some keys from transitioning from, you know what I'm saying, like the streets all the way into just the industry? What's some keys to like, even the youngsters out there that's trying to transition and shit? What's the key to transitioning? Yeah. Uh, it was hard for me, like I said, because of the funding. Mm. But um, once you start seeing a fan base, once you start seeing the revenue off of it, mm. then that's like an eye opener. Like, okay, cool, I could do this. It started from when I think a ride past playing your music. You're like, oh, mm. and it's like, okay, then you get a check from iTunes mm -hmm. uh, and book from a, book for a show. But how you deal with that check from iTunes not being the check that's, that you used to? That's back then, though. I'm not talking oh, about Oh, you talking right about, okay, now. I got you. I got you. I got you. Right now, you know, it's all streaming and everything yeah. different right now, but I'm talking about back, okay, cool, they fucking with me. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, now I got to go even harder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was some advice that Dolph had gave me, like, once you get, once you, once you get popping, once you get high, you got to go even harder. A lot of people want to, Stagnate and be content and slow right. down. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now you, they, oh, you made one hit. Oh, he, he only made one. He can he make two? Oh, you made two. He can't make three. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of people. I, I don't never stop. Like every day, I'm doing something musically. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm not even rapping, if it's getting an artist album cover done, mix and master in a video, whatever, I'm doing something musically. That's mm -hmm. the only way you're gonna be. You know, I'm great with this shit. Mm -hmm. Did you think the easiest city like to break your music in? The easiest city. Um, I couldn't say Atlanta because Atlanta really don't break the south. I mean, the break like California niggas like that. Like you know what I'm saying? But here, I would have to say like LA because that's close. But like they got labels there. We don't got no labels here. The biggest thing we got here is Empire. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like like in the, in the south. Shit, I, I've been moving around the south. Like my I didn't came to scream before. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a support. I didn't watch it. I didn't see. Little baby buzz, everybody yeah. push them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I done, I done seen future. I seen everybody get behind everybody. Do y'all have that here? Nah, we don't got that here. No? Nah, it's, it's crabs in the buckets. Damn. You know what I'm saying? It's crabs in the buckets. A certain few that do like fuck with each other, but everybody don't. Mm -hmm. So, how do you prevent that crab in the bucket mentality from discouraging you to go harder, like you said? How because you I know what I want. I know what I want. I, I, common sense ain't that common. So a lot of people they get 
it gets stuck in the in the um mad rapper. Yeah, like oh man, niggas ain't fuck with me. Yeah, yeah, shit. yeah. I don't give a fuck, nigga, fuck with me or not. You know what I'm saying? I was born this motherfucker by myself. I'm gonna go by myself. So and I'm, I'm doing this for myself. I'm not doing this for you. And I'm not the type of nigga for everybody to like. I don't, if everybody likes you, something wrong. You know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. that's my whole mentality anyway. Plus, that's my transition from the block. That's how I was on the block before rapping. You know what I'm saying? I, I dealt with niggas on the block not liking me. So rapping really, you know, you mad at me because I'm, I'm rapping better? Or I got more shows? Or, or people yeah. like me more? Like, that's, that's minor. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. It's just that basically, like you know, you got you got to think outside the box and know that that comes with it. If you ain't ready for hate, you ain't ready for success. Mm. Well, so y'all, go ahead, Zay. So, how important do you think, like family? Well, not even necessarily like blood family, but like your friends that are family are to your as. as or let me ask you this: How do you think? How important do you think your friends' family is relative to your success when you're coming up as far as support? Your friends, family? Yeah, like 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 your niggas that you look like as your brothers. Okay. Probably more than your like fucking mother's brother. I'm, I'm actually closer to, to to my day ones and niggas from my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. In, exactly. in my family, my actual exactly. family. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, because we end up becoming family. Right. Due to not having the family support. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying so. Me looking up to the older niggas in the in, in the hood. Me not having the pops in my life made me look up to them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, Learn things that I should have been learning from pops, learning from them. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it, it plays a big part because I feel like um, it's a support system, and you need that, especially if you you know you doing this like everything I do, I do for my kids. My son is here. I do for my neighborhood. I do okay. for my family also. Like I I take pride in doing for and seeing other people successful. The people that you care about. Yeah, primarily. People, yeah, people I care yeah. about. Yeah. Right. If you got a if you got a crew in your opinion like if you got a crew of like let's say twenty people because we see a lot of shit going on in the media but if you got a crew of twenty people the average crew not necessarily saying your crew if it come down to it and shit hit the fan in them crews how many people you think gonna keep it solid because we seeing like multiple crews not pointing at this one situation but we seeing like multiple situations where niggas might run with ten niggas twenty niggas thirty niggas but when it come down to it it's almost like the people that you expect to keep it solid don't and vice versa. What's your thoughts on that? I think I seen a saying where somewhere I think it said like is it a three out of four or one out of three niggas in the group uh, a snitch. One out of three? Yeah, I believe I seen that somewhere. I believe two out of three. Yeah, so two I think I think like three out of four, or one yeah. out of three. It's one of the two. You get what I'm saying? So what what kind of mindset would that put and we're just saying in general, you in if you know you would you like you with ten niggas like is somebody gonna fall. I mean, is this something that you can't control? Like, yeah. you won't find out until it happens. You will hope that everybody stays solid. Wow. But, I mean, with, with niggas you know, oh, you feel me, just stay solid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So that's just part of the game you just it's deal part with. of it. Like, you, you never know until it happens. You can't really, they could be the gangsters, nigga, toughest nigga in the world until something happening and then something changes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's another famous lyric of... Uh, that resonates with LA face with the Oakland booty. Yeah. Where, where did that where did that term what does that mean? Like why you think I mean that's before my time, but apparently a pretty face and a nice ass. What I'm saying, so I didn't So that means that Oakland it. has nicer asses than LA asses? Probably at that time, yes. <laughs> <laughs> See right now I think I probably say like a uh, probably, I probably say like a uh, damn, See, I, see I, 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 like, I like thick women. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to be skinny. Okay. I used to be real skinny, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't, couldn't be no bones, hit no bones, you know what I'm saying? I just like thick women. So yeah, I probably would say like an LA ass or a Houston ass. I mean, not LA, Atlanta ass or a Houston ass. Oh, you, you know going, okay. You going to drag okay. Atlanta into it. Mm-hmm. Okay. LA face with a ATL ass. It ain't, really, it ain't really like, it ain't that many thick ones like that out here, though. It's more slimmer, kind of like in LA, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what else we need to know about Oakland? We're gonna chop it with the homie Mr. Fab, of course. Shouts to Fab Week. Yeah, we got a lot of good shit down. going on. Um, shout out my brother Lord Rab in the building. We got a good podcast going on. Um, no vultures um, coming out of East Oakland. Shit in FOD, man. We pushing. You know, shout out my bro Fab for always showing love and support. You know what I'm saying? Everything yeah. I got going on, 
So it's only right that I, you know, return the favor. You know what I'm saying? So right. that's what we build on, you know what I'm saying? Like that's the type of shit like you know it's gonna be the fakes, the snakes and the haters and all that, but now that ain't us. We stay away from that, you know what I'm saying? The chosen few. And that's why we you know, that's why we the successful ones. Mm. And like I tell a nigga, nigga mad about another man's success, hey, don't be mad at me, be mad at God. Because God, if God wanted you to be successful, you would be successful. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. That's I'm it not is. stopping you from being successful. Some you must you must not be resonating with the people or, right. or God ain't fucking with you, you know what I'm saying? For you to be where you where you need to be. So you <laughs> right. need to go have a talk with a couple right. of you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> You know, have yeah, these niggas will take it out on you. Like you stop them from selling a million records every time. Yeah, you stop them every from time. Like, yeah. Yeah. Nigga, if you wanted, to, if they wanted to book you for a show, they gonna book you. They There's to, always somebody yeah. at fault. Yeah, that's somebody scapegoat. That's yeah, the scapegoat. They gonna, yeah. Oh man, he, he doing this or they'll say that we the gatekeepers and we locking them out. I be hearing that it's, shit it's, too. There's no way for that to happen. It's it's, it's, it's social media. Right. If it's, it's gonna Instagram. pop. It's gonna pop. Yeah. You gonna man? You could DM a nigga right now. There's no way that. You know what I'm saying? Niggas say, hey, man, don't fuck with that nigga. That don't even sound right coming out of my mouth. I ain't, I ain't even got no time to even tell no Be next man. Be about what another the nigga next got. Man, tell the yeah. next man not to fuck with the next man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I tell a man, go buy that nigga shit. Mm. Even the niggas that don't like it, go buy it. I ain't going to stop me from getting mine. Right. So you preaching, you believe in accountability. Of course. Sure. Yeah. What's, one, what's one time when you had to just man up and say, man, I got to be accountable for this shit. This um, is some shit. Shit. Just, I just had a uh, fair case I just fought. And um, I was um, up against it, you know what I'm saying, my Cody, and I had to hold accountability, like, shit, I was wrong, I was going to end up taking the time so my Cody can get off, mm. you know what I'm saying, yeah. um, but shit, the way it worked, I ended up getting the same thing as my co-defendant and got the probation, but shit, I was ready to go take the 33 months because I was, I was wrong, mm. you know what I'm saying, as in me being a felon from California and me not knowing that I wasn't supposed to be in a gun store. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So by me not being, by me not knowing, I'm thinking it's, it's legal. I'm in Las Vegas, but they try to switch the narrative as I, I got my co-defendant buying guns for me. Mm. Mm. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm wrong for for being in a gun store by being a felon, which I didn't know. Okay, okay, I'm gonna take that. But I'm but, not gonna let this nigga yeah. go down because of my ignorance. Yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. it, it just it, for one, it was just like. Um, I, I, this person had a gun license. This person had a gun. We was returning the gun, getting another one. I'm there with him, so now it, it made it illegal. Mm-hmm. They trying to label as a straw purchaser, and I'm got them buying guns from me and all type of shit. So I'm like, oh, I'll take the 33 months, let them get off. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But Real my shit, lawyer bro. went in there, spent like 300 on my lawyer. You know what I'm saying? And had all sent to Miranda, had all type of letters from Fab Empire on my community service and family members and everything. And, you know, the lawyer, he ended up saying some, I mean, not the lawyer, the judge ended up saying some shit like he watched a movie called Shane when he was a kid. And uh, Shane carried a gun, but he was for his people. Mm-hmm. Right. So that didn't make him a bad guy. So because you wanted to carry a gun, that don't make you a bad guy. Mm-hmm. I see all this good shit you got going on. I ain't going to take you from your family. Mm-hmm. Um, it's real. Yeah, and um, you know, DA was in there mad, kept coughing. You know what I'm saying? While he, while he um, <laughs> making this announcement or whatever. So I ended up getting uh, 24 months probation. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I was going to hold my accountability. I was ready to go do what I had to do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're always giving gems on Big Facts, man. What's the big gem you want to give to the Big Facts Nation out there? Um, stand on your business, stand on your square. And, you know, um, understand that everybody ain't going to support you. Understand everybody ain't going to want to see you successful. And, um, you know, I, I believe in loyalty. Loyalty than anything. Like, yeah. even with me, with my artists, like, I, I know what I signed up for. So, I can lose with you, I can win with you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I can't want this shit more than you want it. You know? Right. But I've been there, I've done that. I'm going to give you my advice. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be behind you 100%. And that's just where I'm at with it. Like, I, I believe in principles and morals. You know what I'm saying? I ain't... Oh yeah. no snake shit, no backdoor shit, no, nothing like that. You know, I believe in karma also. Mm-hmm. So it's about being solid, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Be yourself. When you wake up in the mirror, wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, brush your teeth, wash your face, and you don't don't try to change your voice to sound like this other rapper Real or try shit. to Real change shit. the way you look to look like this one because this is what's in and this mm-hmm. is the fad. Mm-hmm. Be yourself. Mm-hmm. You're gonna feel you know it's gonna be more authentic, more genuine, and you're gonna feel better when you do succeed. Right. Because you, once you do it like that, every day you're going to have to remember, oh, yeah, I got to sound like this. Oh, yeah, I got to look like this. 
instead of just being yourself. You know what I'm saying? If they don't, if they don't fuck with you because of that, then shit, that's their loss. It is what it is. It is what it is. Shit. Big shouts out to Filthy Rich. We appreciate, appreciate that conversation. You, Big facts. Salute to you. You got to come to the one next time you come to the ATL tour. Oh, yeah, yeah. I need to come you. out there, man. Uh, shout out my bro Smitty. He got a um, hookah lounge out there, Serenity. You know, I've been fucking with the A for a while. You know what I'm saying? Hey, come to the A, let's like, get that real one out. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? We just dropped through the fuck with y'all. Hell yeah, yeah, man. Shout, shout out my brother today. Fab. Nah, it's big shout out to that nigga. You know what I'm saying? For always putting on Fab, always support yes. all the up and coming right. artists, all the niggas that's doing something positive in the city. You know what I'm saying? And, being who he is, you get what I'm saying? That's why he blessed. You know exactly. For sure. Yeah, nah, a lot of niggas don't carry that energy. Yeah, you know, a lot of niggas for self. Yeah. Self, mm -hmm. self, self. You know, not, not, I ain't never been for self. Like, I learned that from Big Meech. Meech, like, uh, he step in the building. It's different between 20 niggas got a BMF shirt on than once. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm exactly. saying? They gonna see, see yep. the BMF niggas, you know what I'm saying? And just that one nigga now with that shirt, so. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's about, you know. Showing love to other motherfuckers that's being positive also. I, I want to see everybody succeed. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Appreciate you, filthy rich man. You know what it is. We have Fab Week 2024. Big facts. We just getting warmed up. Let's go. Fat Week 2024 is going down. Big fastest touchdown. Big Bank, Baby J, DJ Screen. We're here, and the man of the, uh, the man of the week is here, Mr. Yeah. Fab. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's it. Brought can't us give him no hour. Brought us out to the bay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, there's nothing but love, can't, man. Can't give him no hour. He going Monday to Monday. Man <laughs> of the week. <laughs> How long is Fab? Putting on for the city. How week, long man. How's it tired, boss? It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Monday to Monday, man. We do seven days. What's that? How many years? Four. It's the fourth year? Four. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but it wasn't always a week. Like, I started off with just, like, two, three days. But now it's just got it to a week. I just felt like the purpose of it is, you know, community empowerment, economical development, workforce flooding, um, and a lot of influxes of what we can do with our influence in the community. Mm. So, speaking of community empowerment, um, I was reading that you do, like, a lot of like annual events for like Thanksgiving, Christmas, like different holidays and stuff like that. But you also focused on two separate causes, which are cancer and domestic violence. You want to talk a little bit more about what you've been doing for those things? A lot of the things that we do in the community, because it's, it's never me, it's always we. Right. Um, this year is our 20th year of our annual philanthropy, uh, philanthropy acts and then the community, philanthropic um, cancer. My mother died from cancer. My mother had a rare cancer. My mother had a cancer where it was like only like eight people had ever had this cancer before. It was like super rare, like super duper rare. And um, it it drove me closer to kind of interrogating and discovery of what it is and how we can go through preventative measures and trying to figure out right, you know, and right. catch things before they happen. Especially us, a lot of us, you know, some of the things that are hereditary, um, our, our lifestyle, our eating habits and things of that nature. And right. so we have to focus on that. And once informed, it's our job to give back, to, right. teach, to teach and share. So that domestic violence, my father would, you know, be very abusive with my mother. So a lot of okay. the things that I do is it's based like off my childhood. You witnessed Most and definitely. you wanted to change it. Most definitely. Okay. It's, it's, it's uh, reverse engineering on childhood trauma. Yeah. And you always, always lived in Oakland from forever. For sure. Born and raised. Would you ever consider, would you move, you think? Um, would I buy land in other countries? Would I buy houses like we've already done? You know, of course, we've always had spots in the A and, you know, Vegas and things of that nature. But um, Oakland is home for me. And one of the reasons why it's home for me, I, I'm, I'm connected on different energies, on different levels. Mm. You know, um, I think this is my reset. Mm. You know, my, my, my reset and when, when life becomes, you and I have confidential talks mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and when we, when, we, when we do speak on what it is that we speak on, those things are heavy to me and they're very important to me. And um, I don't know if I could live life outside of being able to go to my reset spots. Mm. So, What's your habitat? So, Oakland is, Oakland is home to me. So let me ask you this, since Oakland is home, um, two words, Mac, Dre, Hyphy, what did those mean to you? Uh, Dre was my big dog, man. You know, I'm one of the last artists that Mac Dre actually uh, physically signed right. to his label. Um, and we were able, we signed up for 
um, the adventure. And shortly after, he was uh, he was murdered. And so I feel like it's my uh, my obligation to continue to carry his the legacy, legacy. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as um, curating my own. Right. So, but you know, I always represent for Mac Dre as a major part of a demographical icon um, and and what he was able to do around the country abroad from someone from such a small area how his influence was able to touch so many different people from yes. all around uh, the country Definitely. and you know and being traveling to Europe and traveling around the world seeing his influence there so uh, it will always be a part of me and I'll always speak of him in high fashion what what, what type of uh, influence shout played, played on you that's my rap dad <laughs> me too. Like for real. Like, like, like me and Short. <laughs> me and Short is like, like I call, I, I call him Pops. Yeah. So I call him sometimes. Be like, Dad, what you doing? <laughs> like, well, well, like for real. Yeah, like, shit. like that's our relationship. Yeah. Like Short's known me since I was eight years old, nine years old. My mom used to run a club right around the corner from here, and I was the kid, little shorty in the club. So Short would always be like. Bro, what your young ass doing in here, man? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why you always around all these old people? You got an old spirit. So I've been around him so long. And then in rap, like, I remember being an A back in the day, like, you know what I'm saying? In a, uh, in, in a former life, allegedly trapping out there. Um, and I remember the record y'all did when you was first, when you was rapping. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day. With who? You and Short. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember yeah, that was yeah, one of your, yeah, one of your yeah, early yeah, records. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, he was on the remix. Yeah, he was on the remix. He was on the remix. One, yeah. one shot on the remix to that. Yeah, uh, he, he got on it. He got on that. Who was it? BG? Short got on the record. Who was BG? It was a. Too short. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm crazy, man. Am I tripping? Nah, short was on the record, man. Which record was this? Man, what's You talking about the remix to try it out? It's a record. Who was on that record? It's a record with Black and Show, man. It was. We was in Atlanta. And. We, you, you came up talking about where we was, and you was like, dog, man, get on this thing. I, I wrote it. I'm like, I know the record. Uh, <laughs> Damn, I'm trying to think, man. Damn, what Bro, is that shit's so fun. Like I said, my former life. How you yeah. say former life? Yeah, Bro, that shit. Life. <laughs> I done forgot a lot of this shit. It's a record you and dog did, man. I can believe uh, it, though. But nah, that nigga, that raised me on that. But yeah, it's... He fucked my, he fucked my uh, trust up for women, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga did, fact, man. That nigga it's shout, fact. man. See, he be saying, man. Dog, man, is a... Dog is a... That's a um, he a god to me. You know what I'm saying? Like a uh, that's a rap god, man. And, and and too short is one of those guys. When you dive into the dichotomy of everything that he has brought in as a music um, enthusiast, you'll be like, damn, this dude and did everything. And uh, I'll always love short for always br- grabbing me in, embracing me, and just showing me the love that he showed me, man. And that's that's my dog. So how does it make you feel to see him at the Sundance Film Festival about to premiere? And debut his movie Skiing on the Slopes. I love it. I love um I love everything that's happening for him. I love yes, I, I love the so. rest of the world getting a chance to experience experience the, the, the short experience. You know, he's one of the when you hear of greatest storytellers ever and you hear the rappers talk about, you know, they'll name the slick ricks and they'll name uh, the ice cubes, they'll name a lot of these rappers mm-hmm. from different regions. Um, and it's always uh, troubling to me and I always not hear his name mentioned as far as greatest storytellers. This is a guy who had a song for seven Cocktails. minutes just talking mm-hmm. about different women and mm-hmm. yeah, 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 you know yeah, yeah. He, he was able to vividly depict what Oakland looked like for individuals that may have never ever stepped foot in California. Mm-hmm. There you right. go. And so, you know, this is all through rap and the art of storytelling uh was something that he he uh he built his whole career off. And right. so to be able to hear his name mentioned nowadays in certain conversations, it's a uh, it's a relief for me because I'm just I'm happy to get a chance to witness him receive flowers. Right, like, right, right. Exactly, exactly. You know, Big Facts is the perfect place to pop your shit. Man. We're going to push you into popping your shit. So the first thing I want to talk about is that pen game. A lot of people don't know their favorite records was written by this man right here. The pub checks is crazy. Right. Talk about some of the records that you eat. Just, just wrote records. You know, Scream, man, at this age, man, I ain't the one to, you know. What's the records? If you know, you know. You feel me? It's yeah, just, I, it's, I don't know. It's a couple <laughs> records, man. It's a few little records. Um <laughs> Had a chance, man, to link in with a lot of people, man. A lot of networking, a lot of records being wrote. Yeah. Um, that keeps some keeps of the records is confidential. You can't speak on them. Some records you, are confidential. Some, some records are just life you of know, the party. Just have respect. Life of the party. Life Snoop of the party is one. Snoop Dogg. Um, Atlanta-based record. Uh, headband. Okay. You know, I, headband I didn't know from that. Bob. Bob. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it's 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 a lot of records, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. You know what I'm saying? Some regional. Some you know worldwide. Some nationwide. 
Yeah. But uh, hey, man, it's a passion, yeah. and it's also another outlet for artists to realize that you don't just always have to be the front man. Right. You can play the behind right. the scenes. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and uh, it'd be cool, man. It'd be cool to see sometimes, you know, the publishing checks come out the blue sometimes. You'd be mm -hmm. like, damn. Mm -hmm. Ask Cap, well, we like, oh, that was cool. That was, I need that. <laughs> yeah, like, right you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, it'd be, it be lit, though, man. I, I enjoy it. And, for, and, for, and furthermore, popping your shit a little more, what about some of them businesses? We know you got Dope Era Store. What else? Uh, clothing store, nightclub, a couple nail shops, uh, museum. Um, we run a marketing company. Um, we also have uh, just ventured into of recently, as I was telling you, I run a, a program and a workshop called Thug Therapy, mm -hmm. which has uh, intertwined inside of the, the youth. We, uh, we're getting a contract now, and I just did a, uh, a merger and acquisition with the Warriors. We did a partnership, mm. the Warriors and Kaiser, mm. uh, being able to- Kaiser Permanente? Kaiser Permanente. Okay. Um, being able to serve uh, black men in the mental health field. Mm. Uh, something that's rarely talked about or embraced. Right. Some of us have uh, issues with uh, seeking the help that we actually need because of the stigmas right. of black right. men don't search for therapy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So breaking that stigma and the yep. monotony on right. what receiving help looks like. Yep. Um, and so we we've created that that program, and these are just things of dealing with what we're doing and you know in the, in the community. So I'm 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 very looking focused on that in 2024 of diving more into that, mm -hmm. being able to help because uh, in that discovery we'll realize that. Some individuals that we thought were crazy or that we thought was just always, they actually just have functioning autism. And mm. due to medical apartheid, they were never able to be properly diagnosed. So they grew up normalizing some atrocious things. And yeah, now we have deep. to dive into that to be able to show them, hey, man, we're not calling you slow. We're not saying you special needs. We're just trying to extract something for you to open it up and realize, mm. damn, I didn't never, I never knew that I was dealing with this. Real mm. shit. So those mm. are the things that we're dealing shit, with. Some right. folks, we be like, boy, that ain't crazy. Like, whoa, whoa, but in actuality, dude mm. had autism. Mm. Dude had, you know, a functioning autism where right. his parents was more embarrassed than to actually go get the necessary help that he needed. And they normalized mm. it and allowed him to grow up thinking that it was something else. You yeah. know, self-diagnosis. Mm. I mean, he crazy. That's ADHD. You self-diagnose, you self-medicate. Come on, now you self-medicate. Yeah. And we all know that, you know, frustration and resentment are the parents of violence. Mm. What's some of the shit you got in the museum? Um, right now, it's just some tributes. I have a big uh, a tribute to MC Hammer, to me, which is the greatest man on earth. Mm. Um, it's Why a big... I, Hammer's just the greatest guy on earth. You got to think, being a young, poor kid, growing up in the projects, seeing Hammer pull up in Ferraris and everything, drive through, that was our motivation. That was outside. Off, what? For sure. That's how, that's like, how. people play with Hammer outside of the air. Like, they play games, but they'll never play with Hammer. Like, they never play with Hammer. They could talk it all at once. They never play with Hammer. Hammer, old school jump out. What's Hammer? What'd you say? <laughs> yeah. Run that right yeah, now. I need to. Yeah. Mr. Prey and can't touch this. Like, he, yeah, all right. He's like, I'm just saying. I want to know. I want to learn. <laughs> Hammer, I'll be like, Hammer, I'll be like this. <laughs> right, let's go. A oh, regular nigga. Right now. Behind, we going to get him. <laughs> you either gonna stop talking or we finna get him. You wanna get him? Damn, I ain't know. And his nah, family say them dancing that nigga beat your ass. Listen, and, and, his, and his family was with all the activities. Wow. Like oh, I'm talking about every activity you could think of, his brother and them was with. Mm. Like for real. Like yeah. not playing. You think he comes talk to us at some point? Hammer don't do no interviews. Damn. He's so I used to think that it was overprotective of his story, uh -huh. but now he's just valuing what he is. He said some stuff the other day at the uh, Tupac revealing they gave Tupac a street named the street after Tupac. And he was like, I'm 60 years old. I'm not playing games with none of these artists. I'm not going to go to these parties to fake mingle. Y'all hated me my whole life, my whole career. Y'all try to make a mockery of everything that I've done, mm -hmm. laughed at. But... Now y'all want me to come be a part of y'all celebrations and all of that. I'm not doing it. But I think it's a lesson to be learned in, a, I don't know the specifics, it's a lesson to be learned from him financially having that Fucking bread. Fucking all that money. He, but the money that he fucked off is something that what we have to be educated on, because when we think bankrupt in that time and when hip hop was stated and how people used it in context, yeah. we all thought that he just went broke. When in actuality, Donald Trump has filed bankrupt over a hundred times. Fact. That's fact. So many of these people that have Understanding of financial literacy, they understand that these chapter 11, chapter 13 files for bankruptcy will uh, make you say, MC Hammer don't have no money. Stanley Burrell do. Mm. So his bankruptcy wasn't you and I's or mm. paying hers. Mm. So yeah, I may not have 50 million no more, but this five, 10 million, I'm still good with. Exactly. We, you, you've never seen MC Hammer on a Southwest flight. Uh, you know, we ain't never seen him flying regular. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Hammer ain't like, Hammer people forget. 
Hammer was actually a guinea pig. He, for, bro. he was he was a guinea pig for the tech world. And what I mean by that is he was the first one to dibble and dabble in Twitter. He was Google to find out the analytics of how those things work. And in those partnerships, he was able to receive percentages from these high tech companies. Mm. So a lot of people don't know about that side of the money that Hammer like Hammer is that dude. But mm. I, I feel like not to cut you off, I feel like in terms of Don't leave it there. <laughs> I feel like in terms of financial literacy and learning what to do and what not right. to do with your money, right. I'm probably going to catch a lot of flack for this, but I feel like the MC Hammer of this world walked so the Fat Joe could fly. Right. Because Fat Joe fucked up his money on his on his niggas too. A lot of, a lot of people did. That money back up, man. Yeah, Hammer, Hammer, like, listen. I just saw him on a commercial. I'm telling you. Hammer ain't no money problems. Yeah, yeah, but he blew through that shit on these niggas. But to be able, but but, but I, I, and this uh, was this was his question, and then I'm gonna get back to the originally answer on what's in the museum. Uh, okay. What Hammer said something real. He said it's okay for people to rap about killing, destroying, destruction, uh, polluting our communities, and they become praised. He said, but people look at me and say, you took 200 people on tour. And wasted your money and blew your money. He say, what about these 200 people whose lives I changed? Who I got a chance to go see the world? Who I got a chance to get away from the negativity that was going on here in Oakland, California? Yeah. These lives that I changed. Are we equating money and changing lives? He said, I would do it again any day. Because hmm. I can always make money. Hmm. I can't always save these lives. Hmm. So his sacrifice, if that was his sacrifice, the 20, 30, 40, 50 million, whatever he blew, he didn't care about that. Yeah. But see, like I, like like you said, exactly. I guess that's a part of the misconception because like people like me and other people that don't know that, okay, even though he filed bankruptcy, but he didn't go broke are thinking like, okay, he blew his money and he fucked up. Now he's living on the street because nah. he tried to take care of these niggas. Yeah, that's nah. what, nah. that's how they try to paint the picture like in the media of him going broke and him fucking up that money. Because you got to think the further that we become informed and educated, yeah. the further they push information back. Right. As if, and they said in Hidden Characters, when she said the closer that we get to the finish line, the further they put it back. So in understanding that, we have to learn that, okay, let me learn from Hammer. But as you said, he set down a great baseline on what we could study from and in that blueprint. So yeah. now as we stand on the precipice of receiving these funds and everything that people do, now we can educate ourselves and say, oh, I ain't finna blow it like that. I'm going right. to be a little bit more frugal. But if you ask him, he said, man, I'll do it again. He, th this is one thing that he told me. He said, the only thing that I would change is I wouldn't believe as many stories. Mm. And he would be like, people would come up to me and be like, yo, sh man, my daughter finna get kicked out of college, man. I need 20000 Make it He's like, man, I'll give it to her. Mm. He said, somebody come on, man. My, my auntie got cancer, man. We're trying to get some help with the research. He said, I wouldn't believe as many stories. And mm. one thing that he told me is you have to know your no. Meaning, K-N-O-W-N-O. -N -O. Mm. To know your no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 yeah, and once you know your no, you can learn to tell people, nah, we ain't on that. Right. I'm cool off that. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but yeah. but 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 Hammer's the greatest guy on earth, man. I love that dude. I love his heart. He's uh he's just a great man, man. And um so I have a big a tribute to him in there. Of course I have a big a painting of Too Short mm -hmm. um and Huey Newton. Um which yeah, is, you yeah. know, to me those are like kind of like the dynamics the of, of, of who I'm built and a mixture right. of. I'm a mixture of Huey Newton, MC Hammer, and Too Short. Yeah. And that's Oakland if you, you know, if you if you understand what Oakland is. And the site is all activated by augmented reality, this new technology where we have these things created by a black man, uh, where when you put this certain app to the pictures, all of the pictures come to life in the museum. So it's actually the first. Um, That's hard. It's actually the first um, digital, which is physically physical and digital museum to where now we have a physical where you can touch it, but digitized through the augmented reality. So as we release that in the March, we're going to open up those things, man. And it's a. It's a great experience. If you had to say so to change one thing in Oakland, what would it be? Um, the abandonment of the youth. Um, sometimes we often talk about how the youth are crazy and the youth have run wild. And this is not just in Oakland. This is in Atlanta. This is in Baltimore, Detroit, and all of the inner cities where people have to understand. They have this thing out here called bipping. And bipping is in the breaking windows. It's a yeah, big, yeah, was bro, just talking about that. It's yeah. big about bipping, right? And me and a friend of mine, an elder guy, we talked about uh, he was like, man, these young dudes is crazy, man. They out here breaking windows. And I stopped him at that moment. I said, can I ask you a question? 
And I was like, y'all sold crack. Y'all sold crack to our mamas. Y'all sold crack to our grandmamas. Y'all sold crack to everybody in our generation, our aunties and everything. Y'all broke up families. Are broken windows worse than breaking, broken families? Damn. So, so, so you know what I'm saying? So we talking about a secondary issue and ignoring the primary issue. The primary issue is this is conditioned from the things that they've done. So now if the, if the generation before us don't want to take accountability and the, the young generation is lost and abandoned, of course they run wild. They begin to survive. Mm. When them water boys out there in Atlanta selling waters and doing what they're doing, they hustling. But if y'all not buying them waters, then they start robbing. Mm. The question is, man, these dudes out here robbing, I don't want to stop. Well, ain't nobody supporting them. Ain't nobody giving them nothing to eat. You leave a kid in the jungle and you say, well, do what you got to do. Well, man, I'm finna survive. So I gotta, if I got to kill this rhinoceros, this giraffe, this zebra, this, I got to do whatever I do. And I might eat a poisonous frog. I might get bit by a poisonous snake. But since you've abandoned me in this jungle, don't, don't have no comments about what I'm doing to survive. Because you don't care. Mm -hmm. See, you can pretend to care, but you can't pretend to show up. Mm. And a lot of people out here is pretending to care, but they abandoning these children. That's why when you ask me in the aforementioned, how do I feel about Oakland? I can't leave Oakland just based off the fact of I care. I care right. too much. Right. Maybe that might be my sickness, but if that's my sacrifice, then yeah. so be it. That's how I feel about Atlanta. I feel you. Not a real shit. For real. Real shit. And they got to get back to caring, bro. We got to get back to pouring in. A lot of niggas taking out. We make so much money from, from rap, from hustling, from trapping, whatever it is. And we selfish. We self-centered. Mm. We self-centered. Last year, Fab Week, I spent about $200,000, $300,000. But it was more so just so some folks could have something to do. This year, I spent about $150,000 just to be able to say, y'all, won't y'all have something to do? Mm. Come on, y'all want to come somewhere? Y'all want to come chill? Yeah. Let's get away from it for a second. Exactly. And to me, that's the care. The money ain't the problem. I can always make money. I never had a problem making money. We just saw with the features. Man, we I just, just saw. I just never had a problem making money. Yeah, real shit, right? ever. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. about selling baseball cards, selling clothes, selling shoes, selling hunts, selling weed, sell whatever. Real I real never shit. had a problem making money. Right. I can always make the money back, mm. but nobody have the good memories to talk about. They don't talk about the stuff that we didn't did for years from now. Mm. For real. Mm. Nah, that's real, bro. Yeah. Real talk though, man. Uh, other than that, man, I just want to say, take a second to thank y'all for coming out here. Now, we just appreciate you for having us, bro. My main thing was, like I said, I just wanted y'all, man, just come on out. I don't, I don't, I don't expect nothing from y'all, but just y'all appearance and y'all just to be able to say, man, y'all got a chance to come out, show some hospitality, whatever y'all may have needed. You know, you and I, Screen, we've been rocking for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and and Black, what you represent, man, for the culture of, you, you represent transition. Thank you. Facts. And, and transformation. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Appreciate that. For an individual to say, man, look what I'm doing. Look, what, yeah. I went from being a dope boy, belly, tummy, hustling, grinding, won't, won't, grilled up. Y'all know what it is. <laughs> when y'all come to Atlanta, this on me. Yeah. Like the character that was depicted in Snow Patrol was actually the lifestyle that you had lived. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> allegedly. You get what I'm saying? Nah, really but to see you now, to see you getting your run in, getting your jog on, losing weight, physical yeah. fitness, getting the grill out your mouth, taking that's transition and transformation. Fact. Yes, yes. And us as hustlers that come from the street, we need to see the after. Yeah, it, it, it is possible to, uh, come to on, evolve. Bro. All yeah. they tell us to get money. Yeah, really Don't tell it, never tell us what to do with it. Really mm. So we, we blow it. We spend it on cars, drugs, girls, whatever it is. We yeah. blow it. But now here's the after step of trapping. It's still in me. Real shit. It's, it's just in me on another way. Oh, no, nah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know it's a lot of motherfuckers out there want some payback from way back, too. So, <laughs> so it's, still in, it's still in me. So we watch it. No, just like I, I say, you know. Now like, I'm in better shape. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? To see you, we nigga. Hit. Just like me. <laughs> and I tell all my people, no matter how big you get, never be naive to what somebody else don't have. Fact. Right. Pac said it a long time ago. Real never shit. be blind to a broken man's dream. Real mm. shit. Right. So you see me, I'm like, huh, here you go. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. That's the time, that's time I'm on. Real shit. I told you that's what it was. You told me that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the type of time I'm on. You know, I, you know, I, I felt like I may have wanted to get something to eat before I saw you, so make sure I got that. <laughs> get what I'm saying, though. But that's what you type of time saying? I'm on because I understand that. Know. That's yeah, just yeah. a trapper alliance. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and no matter how, like, 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 Hov said, man, I'm, I'm up, but I still can't cut my underworld ties. Hell yeah, nah. Mm -hmm. That's what, what that is. is, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna act foolish. I know. So the next is, time you in the city. Uh, I gotta come to the A. Um, at the end of next month, we doing some stuff. Me and Jazzy, uh, doing some some writing stuff, man. And uh, I'm gonna come out there and dribble. 
And um, we got to get out there and get a full episode out of you. Come on, man. man. Come on, man. For real. And like I said, while y'all time here, man, I want y'all to come to the you know basketball game and just chill. This was like some real just subtle things. I was just trying to fill up the yeah. schedule. And I was like, man, let me put some... Let me let me let me get y'all a free little couple day vacation real yeah, quick. Yeah, I appreciate that. I got me some rest. Y'all been yeah. working y'all ass off. I got off, me some rest, bro. Yeah. I got me. A, I slept all chill. day yesterday. And I wanted to just introduce y'all to some folks that's in our area, man. So if it's just some little spot, even if it's just shaking hands, it's a lot of talented artists here, man. Yeah. Right. Well, man, 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 shout man, out man, some of them. Shout out some of them. Man, it's some uh some that's people silent, that's in the bro. room that's right now. Man. You got a uh, you got Pedro who he's he's with FOD, but <clears throat> this dude is like. This dude, is, I did a fashion show the other night. This dude designed the clothes in a fashion show. He performed. He's a producer. He's a poet. He's a young dude that really exemplifies what it's like trying to make it out of the struggle. You got so vicious. You got, of course, you know, we know, we know the Larry Jones. We know the, um, we know the Kamayas. But you got the, the yeah. Just Bangs. You got, you know, the TDs, the Pedries. There's some young dudes out here that's really working their ass off. And they just need to have that lens on them. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, as we talked about, uh, what you and Phil was talking about, it's no outlets like that. It's like only all it is is Gotti and God, Gazi hands is so full, mm. he can't be hands on with everybody right. like he once right. was. Right. So it's hard for him to touch the young dudes. And now he has like penny stocks with Empire. And what I mean by that is, let me just go grab hella artists and just put y'all stuff out, and you make money off that. Mm. But it ain't like he can't touch everybody like he right. used to right. when he was first yeah. starting it. Right. So sometimes you'll get stranded on the island as an artist, mm. and then. There's nobody educating these like people on how to put music out. Mm. So you see these kids with abundance of talent, they just don't know the know-how. Mm. And people be so frustrated with teaching, they 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 get mad at you and like, nigga, you don't know how to upload. No, I don't, nigga. Mm. Educate me, teach right, me. Right, right. So we just gotta yeah. create those outlets, man. But it's so much talent in the bay. Like I'm talking about, you know, the bay is sectioned off like New York and Borough. So Richmond, Berkeley, Vallejo, uh, Oakland, Stockton, Hayward. Well, Stockton is a little bit further, but. All up in there, Stockton like the hottest right now. The EBK uh, crew, they got the hottest shit in Northern California right now. Mm. Stockton, Sack, and it's just a lot of talent, man. And I wish that I could bring all of them to y'all. And since I can't, I wanted to bring y'all here mm. and, and open up the floodgates. If they show, they show. If they don't, hey. Who you think the next person is coming out like, like right um, now on, on the right on the on the, um what you call it when the plane takes off on, on the precipice, right yeah. on the uh, on the on the runway, on the fairway, yeah, yeah. on the fairway. Uh, I like DB by the bag. He from Sacramento. Um, I like uh, who else? I, I, I like I, it's a it's an R and B artist that I've been working with named Derek Neely. I'm talking about this dude. Like, like if Chris Brown decided to retire, he could he could be like, all right, I'm here. Mm. He's super dope, talented. Yeah, um, Phil got a whole crew. His whole FOD crew is crazy. Um, they working their ass off. Where I'm from, North Oakland, man, all my young dudes, like I'm from the smaller side of Oakland. So all my young dudes, they hungry and they just feel like nigga, that niggas don't fuck with us. Mm. Like we from a we from we from an isolated side of Oakland. Like we from the smaller side. So all my young dudes got like chips on their shoulder because they feel like the rest of the city mm. don't rock with them like mm. that. Yeah. But but it's love. Um but it's a dude named Fredro Bags out here right now. He's like, he a fool. Mm. He a fool with it. He from East Oakland. Um he he he, the voice of the youngsters. Mm -hmm. Like he hard, mm -hmm. but the only thing that break us up out here is the gang banging. Right. The gang banging it mess our culture up a little bit, man. So if the brothers could come together, you got the trill youngins. These dudes are some of the most talented young dudes, but a lot of people be intimidated about their movement. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's a lot of talented dudes. Like man, I, I hate naming some without naming the others because I feel like I might have missed out or left out on some people. But all through Oakland, North, East, West, it's talent, man. We just got to be able to grab them. Same in Atlanta. Same everywhere mm -hmm. else. Somebody yeah. just got to put the lens on them. One more quick question, too. What You know, if, if you, you can watch certain movies and they'll depict street life in L.A., New York, Atlanta. Is there that movie for the Bay? Or, or if not, why hasn't anybody ever made a movie about the Bay? Like, You know what's so crazy? Me and Glasses had a conversation the other day, right? Where has he been? G and LA, G been on this, G been on this hustle right now. Yeah, he's just out in the A. Yeah, I chopped G, it G been grinding. G, I fuck with him. I fuck with uh, G hard. Salute. Hard, like, hard, like, hard, like, hardcore. Pause if that's what needed. I don't know. But <laughs> I fuck with G. My, my yeah, shut up. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> but G, that's my dog, though. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, and he was talking, he tried to tell me that Menace of Society was a Bay movie, right? No, it was not. Let me give no. you his, let me give you. Let me give you his... I said it wasn't, so I'm in agreement with you. 
But after further hollering at him, I was like, "Okay, come on with you it." I got a point. Yeah, come on with it. Come so, with it. of course, you had short. You had a lot of bait cats in that movie. You had short. You had Pooh Man. You had um, some of the directors that a lot of Bay Area based stuff, right? Mm -hmm. The soundtrack. You had some Bay Area music on it. Um, he said, "How is this movie in L.A. in Grape Street? None of them wearing purple. Ain't no rags." Nobody is saying blood or cuss. He like he's like nobody is saying none of that. He was like, yeah. and all of the main characters was like, Kane started selling dope. He got his dope from a Oakland nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said, he said, yeah. He said, right. The war kicked off when his cousin got killed. His cousin was a Oakland nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? He yeah. was like, You're a cold nigga. Why ain't nobody talking saying, about that? You he right, though. He like, you right by what you're saying. Chauncey Ch 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 was, uh, Chauncey got, you feel me? Like, when, when they sitting up there watching the movie, he's like, I don't give a fuck what you're talking about, nigga. This look like Kane whooping your ass. That's an Oakland nigga. That was Pooh Man. Yeah. Aggravating, intensifying, and all. But was the set, was the set in Oakland? Yeah. But it was in LA. So this what, LA. He, this is what he was saying, though. He was like, nigga, how is this an LA movie? Nigga, ain't, and this the 90s. So basically, he's saying that Oakland was robbed. He was saying it was an Oakland based. He was like, it was mm. LA gang culture, but the theme of it was Oakland because in the 90s, it's no gang association. Like, nigga, O Dog, the hardest young nigga out there, he ain't got a rag on. Mm. Yeah. He ain't banged. He ain't, yeah. bang. he ain't banged one time. He ain't seen K like, what's yeah, up, nah, Yeah. What's up, cuz? Yeah. He ain't banged one time. This nigga the wildest young nigga. He don't got a gun. Talking about nigga this crip, this Grape Street. Nigga Grape Streets was extra back then. Damn. And so Short. Oh, really Barney. Short was like yeah. nigga. Short was like nigga. I don't know what the fuck Glass was talking about nigga. But them niggas was gang banging hard off the set. He was yeah. like on the set nigga. It's 300 Grape Street niggas. Purple everything. <laughs> Damn. But then when you look at it, you look like this can't be LA. Ain't no gang banging representation. Mm -hmm. There's no blue rags, no red rags, no purple rags, no nothing. Mm -hmm. It's a clean cut version of it. And I say, oh, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, um, I think because directors have not been tapped into the energy of the Bay I agree. for mm -hmm. so long, mm -hmm. um, most, of the, most of the directors are LA based or they come from other areas and go to LA. Right. But I think with the resurgence and the... Um, the emergence of some of these directors, such as Ryan Coogan, who's from Oakland, um, and and shout out to Richmond, he, Richmond ties as well. Mm -hmm. But this is my childhood friend. Like me and him grew up right down the street from each other. Mm -hmm. So Ryan Coogan, with the sex of, success of Black Panther and things of that nature, yep. now him having the independence to do what he wants to do. Um, I look to see a movie from him about this culture. Uh, you have Dion Taylor, who's from Sacramento who's been scoring real big on like these films, independent films and things of that nature. So I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that maybe uh, uh, a film about what we are doing yeah. here that can depict Oakland. You know what I'm saying? There's Overdue. one called Licks okay. and uh, it didn't really have the push behind it, but it's a, it's a great movie. It's a great storyline. It's shot extremely well. And uh, hopefully man, you know, hopefully we can get behind it. And then, with Tubi and stuff like murder, the Detroit guys that just showed us that shit, you could do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do yeah. it. Like, Shout out yeah. the buffs. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Murder. They killing Murder. They been like, killing yeah. it, too. Man, they killing yeah. it. So, you know what I'm saying? Big shot. I've been on Murder Pain line. Like, what's up, bro? Let's shoot one. Yeah. I pay you. Come out here to shoot a movie for the Bay. Whatever, yeah. what you want. Y'all yeah. need an I'm about it, yay area version. I'm, mm. I'm about it is from the Bay. Master, oh, Master, Master P. P from Richmond. He from oh, yeah, he yeah, from yeah. New Orleans, but he came out here and that was like you feel yeah, me? That's, you feel yeah. me? That's, the, that's for sure. <laughs> P, P will tell you, P will tell you, man. I got a lot of game. P, but 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 like you say, one of those versions where it don't got it might not be the greatest. Oh, but it's a good story but line and yeah, you can catch. The, we all done set through a crazy but, ass but movie. Even, but even on um on uh what's the Rick Ross story? What's the name of that movie? Snowball. They had to come to the bay too, right? To learn how to sell crack. Yeah. 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 Like they learned how to, how to cook, to cook yeah. the crack. Yeah. And that's a true story. Yeah, real mm. shit. Like, you know so crazy about the Rick Ross shit, man? Like, me and, Unc me and Uncle Ricky was sitting up talking. He's like, bro, I sat down with the dude, and dude, months later, came and ran with my whole story. He was like, it was crazy to me. And mm. they just, they who, didn't. Who did, who did that? John Singleton. He's like, bro, oh. I sat down with him, told him my whole story. Months took later, it, took they it. come out with Snowfall. That's the mm. real Rick Ross story. Mm. But, the story in it is like Ross 
and our homie Lil D, Daryl Reed, which I wish he was here today because I would love for y'all to holler at him. Daryl Reed is like, he's our, he's like our big meech, our, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and me in no form or fashion am I trying to glorify drug selling. In my mind, I was more so amazed at his ability at to run hustle. a company. 17, yes. 18 years old, organizing and galvanizing multi-million dollar machine as a young kid. Right. And that was marveling to me. Like that was I was marveled by that. I was like, wow, how just right. sitting back reading this story, like this nigga was 19. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Went to jail for 28 years, didn't tell on nobody, stayed solid, was granted clemency by 28 Obama. Years? 28 years. Mm -hmm. 28 years. Came home and got back to it. He back to the bag. Legally this time. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Humbling story. But unfortunately, Hollywood don't depict the stories of individuals that never told and stayed solid. It always weird. They always want to steer the young hustlers a different way. Like, oh, the only way you get a movie is if you tell or yeah. if you did some faulty mm. snake game. So, you know what I'm mm. saying? We probably won't see a movie from him. He stays solid. Mm. They always get a movie to the folks that, you know, plague the game because that's the message that they want to use to you. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Bro, thank you for the invite. You know what yeah, I'm saying? My brother, yes. family. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Believe that. Believe Definitely, that. you know, when you come to the ATL, it's all love. And congrats on another Fab yes. Week 2024. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> for the, hey, thank y'all so much. Thank you. You see the win? End of February. But I'm going to tap in. I'm going to tap in for real. And then y'all know if y'all need anything on any level. Likewise. Let me know. Likewise. 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 Big shout yes. out to Mr. Fab. Yes. Fab Week 2024. Big Facts Touchdown. Yes. www.bigfactspod.com. Salute. Salute. We still have Fab Week 2024. Yes. You know what it is? Big Facts on Touchdown. Bank. Jade screen, we here enjoying the Bay Area, and of course we had the highlight. Unk, you see him with Fab all the time, the Unk and Fab show, all that type of good shit. What's up? What's up? What's up, OG? Man, I appreciate y'all having me on y'all show, man. It's an iron the privilege. I ain't doing nothing. I'm just here entertaining the people. You know me. Now let everybody know your story, man, because you you know you got a very uh, compelling and interesting story. Let let them know a little bit about your story and your history. Break it down and give us the big facts. Uh, well, you know, um, before I. Um, transition into the person I am now, you know, I um, I like spent 20 years running out of jail using drugs, I was on drugs real bad and um, you know like any motherfucker that's out there getting high you know, you be lost, you know what I'm saying, so I didn't yeah. really have an identity of who I am and what I wanted to do in life and and that's kind of like been my struggle it was like my struggle, you know I, a lot of people um, be in them situations and they want to get out they just don't know how to figure their way out you so know, how did you how did you do that? I think I just I just figure out that I need to start loving myself first. You mm. know what I'm saying? Me like not I come from like you know my mother and father use drugs. Um, so and then, so it's almost I, like hereditary. Yes, yeah, like and then you know and then if you know it's some it's some it's some parents that use drugs that still tend to their kids. Yeah, I yeah. kind of like start taking care of myself at twelve. So it's like anything I kind of like knew about life I learned on my own. So it's like. I've always been like a survivor. I really don't know how to live. I'm still kind of like that today. You feel me? All right. But I, I, <clears throat> a lot of people don't understand. Like you know, they 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 run from their problems instead of addressing them. So when I just got to the point where I was like, man, I'm a, I'm gonna start try to be responsible enough to address the issues that I'm going through, and that take a lot because now you got to go inside of yourself and starting admitting st certain stuff to yourself that you might not want to admit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just wasn't, when you wasn't really probably loved as a kid, <clears throat> you don't, it, it stops you from learning how to love yourself. And it may also stop you from learning how to receive love from other, pe other right. people. You know what I'm saying? You, you, if some get to that point, now you got to be responsible for it. You'll run from it. So mm -hmm. I just got to the point where I just started loving myself and wanted to be responsible for who I am because I always knew I had something special about me, but you, I just didn't know what it was. So in the process of me digging inside of me with that shovel, like throwing shit to the left that don't believe there and holding on to the shit that believe, that's supposed to be there, I kind of like found out who I was. And once I did that, it was like the world just kind of opened up. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I just kind of like used my story to try to be like motivation to other people. Like, like if you change your life and you stay dedicated to what it is that you're trying to do, you will see life in it, like seeing light, seeing life from the lenses of an addict, and seeing life from the lenses of, from the lenses of a survivor. From that, it's two different looks at life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? 
What you think the disconnect is between the OGs and the young niggas? That the OGs don't want to be responsible for the fact that they created who the young nigga is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's the, that the hardest one I've heard. Them mm -hmm. facts. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Them so facts. I function. My, like, my, 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 I fuck with the females and the young niggas. The, yeah. the niggas my age, I, I, I represent for us, but I don't fuck with us like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you, to them, you're going to be competition. Anything you do going to always be the competition. If you function right with the young niggas, if you outside with them, if you ain't trying to tell them what to do, but you more so trying to show them what to do. And how to do it. And how to do it. You uplifting them when you see you. I mean, you're doing good. When you're ready to make a change, man, holler at me. I, I, I might not have your blueprint, but I have a blueprint. Yeah. Right. To point you in that direction. Well, Everybody. Lost, yeah, the other OGs want to point out what they do wrong. You feel me? Right. Instead of, nigga, you the product of what they doing wrong. Mm. You, like, the new, you know how generational have different crimes. Mm -hmm. Niggas wasn't doing this, like, so niggas wasn't breaking windows when I was a young nigga. But niggas is breaking windows now. We was breaking lives. We was destroying homes. Real shit. We can't do, a broken window don't compare to nothing what we did to our community. Facts. Right. You feel me? And and we put them in positions to where they breaking windows because, nigga, their parents ain't doing nothing for them. So instead of trying to understand their struggle, you trying to te first you trying to tell them how to change it when I tell not teach them how to eat. So that's gonna already you gonna you already anytime you got something to say something to them about it's always negative. So but you want a motherfucker to respect you, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, it's like you can't tell somebody to stop doing something without giving them an alternative or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah. stop stop breaking any cars and I'm getting five hundred a week all this shit. Well, nigga five hundred thousand be like they be scoring like yeah. to us we look at it like nigga just broke a window. Nah, yeah. if you outside, you be like that nigga. This nigga score for eighty thousand. He be like, what? I'm going to break a window. <laughs> you feel me? Like, but you well, just think you just think a nigga breaking the window. <laughs> Where well, he is? They, 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 it's like you know, Oakland is like uh, Grand Theft Auto. You hmm. feel me? It's like that's how they treat it. But they, but it's only a reflection of us. Hmm. You feel me? Because if we would have been more responsible and more mindful for our actions. And, and better leaders, they wouldn't be going that route. They lead each other. Five young niggas together, they all making the decisions for each other. Because they don't got no big homie telling them what they're doing is right or wrong. Yeah. You feel me? So if you think it, I'm going to ride with it. If he think it, I'm going to ride with it. We They raising each other in one circle. Because at the end of the day, that's the only they got is each other. Mm. What you think the biggest, you spoke of like addiction and getting past that and just making change. What you think the biggest seeds is you got to plant to actually really change something? A habit or whatever it may be. So I think really you got to get to the point of being tired. Like you feel me? Like you got to be fed up with, and you gotta like for me. I just wanted something different. Like I didn't, and then I had a daughter. So I think my daughter, like really, my sons. You know, it's different raising a boy than trying to raise a girl. My sons, like go deal with your mama. You feel me? My daughter just start seeing certain shit like. My paraphernalia, my get high paraphernalia, she had started seeing around. And she got to the point where she wouldn't give them to nobody but me. Like, she knew this shit didn't post it to nobody. You feel me? So it was like, that shit really started eating me up inside. You feel me? Like, man, I got to be a better example. I can't. You feel me? And, like, that, like to this day, that's my dog. That's my motivation. That's who I, 90% of what I do this for is for my daughter. You feel me? It was just that time. But also, I was tired. And, you know what I'm saying? And, and really, I didn't know how to do it by myself, so I had to, like, go get some help in the program. You feel me? Mm -hmm. The program really didn't help me. It gave me the opportunity to be inside and outside at the same time. You feel me? So it gave me a, I can go deal with the world a little bit, and then I can go back inside. Mm -hmm. I can go deal with the world a little bit, then I can go by inside. Because I had been living a certain lifestyle for so long that regular life don't register to me. Like, how you all think? My, my mind might not think that way. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? So a nigga be like, so they automatically think that you're supposed to see life like they do. No, I, I see life differently because my, my addictive personality makes me see life differently. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it just, I, my thought presses are slower. My, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you got to understand all the shit you did to yourself. And then be mindful of the fact that to be okay with it. You feel me? Because just because I might not be as good as you in one thing don't mean that I ain't better than you in something else. Mm -hmm. 
I just yeah. stopped being a knockoff version of everybody else, and I just found a way to be myself. We be picking up shit from everybody else because that shit look good on them. That shit don't look good on you. Mm -hmm. You wear size eight, nigga. This nigga wear size twelve, but you think his shoes hella clean, so like you wanna bozo. put? Now you walking around looking like bozo. Exactly. I was doing that with my wife. Mm. You feel me? Hello, you doing what? I was doing that with my wife. Oh, okay. Walking around with some twelves on, while I wear eight. You feel me? Exactly. That's how I was looking like a bozo. Yeah, niggas but, ain't being. And, but but I'm manipulating myself to say I'm the nigga. I'm doing this. I'm doing yeah. that because you gotta fool yourself to keep doing your, the foolishness. Yeah. If you don't fool yourself, you gon' the fool. Once you stop fooling yourself, the foolishness don't matter no more. Have you ever seen a nigga get mad at you because you know he lying to himself and you? Yeah, and you here, yeah. like, bro. You lying. Bro. You're lying. I don't fuck what you done convince yourself. Self, the right. You're lying. Right. And some that, people lie or be they truth. That's what I'm saying. Because they be it they perspective. They perspective because yeah. that's how they gonna move. When you know it's a lie, like you know, but it's, it's you. Like I told you, nigga, I've been outside all my life. I've been outside since I was 12 years old. I didn't see game on every level, but the best game I ever seen was the game I ran on myself. <laughs> now that's cold right now. <laughs> that's the that's the, nobody shit. ever. I ain't never seen a nigga fire to me when it come to me manipulating me. But wow. facts. That's in why fact. you can see. That's why you can wow. see. That's why when certain you niggas walk up, out my mouth. I'm stepping it on this. I'm gonna say that on something else. Right. Real you shit. Because I never seen a nigga run a better game on um, me than I ran on, on myself. myself. You understand that's what I'm saying? Facts. Nigga, your game. You can, when you walk up, I see your so game you know coming. You mm -hmm. I yeah. see your game coming. Mm -hmm. Why, nigga? Because I done ran that game on me already. Mm. It don't work for you, nigga, because it, it worked for me. I already ran it. On oh, yourself. It, that it's blew up now. You feel me? That's <laughs> yeah, and that's that's shit. how it goes. <laughs> so you nigga be like, man, I don't hear that shit, bro. Nigga be like, man, this nigga don't know. I don't it ain't that I don't believe you. It's just that nigga, I ain't believing the lie you telling yourself because I told that lie to myself for long enough. Mm. <laughs> I can't accept your lie when I used to accept it for me. And, and so, you know what I'm saying? That's just kind of like my story. So now, you know what I'm saying? I was just lucky enough, man, you feel me, to be able to, when I came out the program to, like, day one, man, my nephew, like, we've been together. We get together every day, all day. You feel what I'm saying, me? He ain't going to let me fall, and I ain't going to let him fall. You feel what I'm saying, me? And everybody need that. You feel me? Like, like in life, you, you need somebody that's going to hold you accountable. And then it's, and that's going to hold you up. Mm. You feel me? Nigga, you can't hold me accountable if you ain't holding me up. Mm. You feel me? Because now you just you just want to bring up some shit when you see some when you when you, when you will see some shit. But nigga, when you see some shit going on, you ain't offering no help. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to point out my fuck ups if you ain't trying to help me be better. Yeah, shit. You can keep that shit to yourself. It ain't doing no good for me. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And your opinion don't matter if you ain't trying to help. Yeah. You feel me? On, your only opinion it only like matters. Judge, it sound like judgment. It sound like judgment. You got opinion exactly. without no with not no um what you call it. An uh, opinion a solution. without a solution. Yeah, but you got opinion it, without a solution. solution. It's, it's just, not like judgment. It's like you judging exactly. me. You ain't trying to help me. So you got to, like, when you see something, you got to, unless you know it's coming from a motherfucker that care about you. Like, somebody can say something to me, and I know, nigga, you saying it, and you and I, to another nigga, I'm going to jump up and get all in your face about it. Mm -hmm. Because I know you ain't saying But if a nigga said the same way that it's coming from love, yeah, I ain't expecting you to say it a certain way. Because I need you to get it out the way you feel it. And I need to know that you love me enough that what you're telling me is based on love. It ain't based on nothing else. So, nigga, however you say it to me, I'm going to accept it. And I ain't going to have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. But if if it ain't coming from somewhere that I think that has to do with some type of love, I ain't fucking with it. Mm -hmm. Because you judging me, nigga. You probably judging me on how you judge yourself. Because mm -hmm. that's the only time we see something in somebody else. I can't see nothing in me in him that I ain't seen in me. I only <laughs> see it because I see it. It, mm -hmm. it's, it got something to do with me. Yeah. Protection. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it has something to do with me. That's how I'm able to That's see how it. it. That's how I'm able to see it. Yeah. How else? I can't... Or feel it. Like, I have to been and already been through it or see it. Like... We finna have Gators and Buffs at the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. These niggas been scored in. That's... that's it's, they ain't gonna be quiet in here. It's open. They don't listen this much. <laughs> <laughs> no, we appreciate them gems, man. Yeah, sure. Next time you come to the ATL, please tap in. For sure, man. Where, where, where can they follow you and get some more I'll gaming in? I pay attention to you. I, you, you come from this. You yeah. feel what I'm saying, me? So how you tell? I know, man. I check. I do history. <laughs> nigga, I know what's up. Ain't no mystery. Yeah, nigga, I do history. Nigga, I'm going on facts. Nigga, ain't just big facts. Yeah, you feel me? So Real it's history. easier for a nigga to come on here and open up to motherfuckers that 
been down. You might not. You might have been on the other side of it. It's the same thing. But it's all the same. Ain't, we ain't, both was addicted no to the same it thing. Ain't right? no different, bro. We are, addiction is an addiction. I don't give a fuck what it was. And a nigga be addicted to these streets, just like a nigga getting high. Mm-hmm. Nah, you said they say, uh, you know, niggas wear that unk badge as a as a symbol, of di- like bro. A disrespect. For sure. now, I like that shit because that, uh, that's to me that's a sign of respect. It matter where it's coming from. Yeah. And it also, a nigga gonna unk you on your terms. So nigga, if you ain't doing shit with your life, you know that nigga unking you on a bad term. But yeah. nigga, I know I ain't thinking you disrespecting me yeah, by calling me uncle on my to, shit. No, nah, no, nah, I don't. Nigga, I'm on my shit, so it, I know it ain't in disrespect. Just don't call me dad. That is dad. shit you call ah! the <laughs> oh, call gee, I don't like dad. a nigga to call me OG. Dad. Dad. Hey, I'm a young ah! nigga. Dad. Dad. I'm a young nigga. I fuck with young bitches. I'm a young nigga, man. Because <laughs> I, I ain't, ain't mature. Yeah. 20 <laughs> years of fuck. I'm really like 30 years old. Yeah, real yeah. shit. On some real <laughs> shit, bro. I'm able to admit that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas don't know how to admit that. Like, now I'm a young nigga. Why you act like that? Because I'm my mature level is that's where I'm at. Right. Mm. A lot of niggas don't want to admit that, so now you be lost. You trying to figure out who you are. Now I know who I am. I'm like 35, nigga. I got a motherfucking a 10th grade education, nigga. If most of my thoughts come up first. I got a second guess is because they street related and they ain't prosperous. Facts. You feel me? Tari. Like I know all them things. The first thing that come up, I'm checking that one. Is that the right one? Yeah. Because it's gonna pop up from the history of what I've been through. And how I see life, and I seen life from the hardness, not from the goodness. Right. So no. most of my decisions going. My feelings and everything gonna be about some. Now that's why I tell my niggas all the time. I'm like, my first mind was built off some bullshit. So I have bullshit. to second guess I my first second, mind. I gotta mm-hmm. make guess my sure. First mind to make mm-hmm. sure. You know what I'm saying? My first, my first uh, energy, energy is different. It's gonna be different. Mm-hmm. Like if I get the, some shit out of my energy, that's yeah. just what it is. Yeah. But my first mind, mm-hmm. gotta second guess that bank because you, you kind of fucked up. Mm-hmm. You, be you know what I'm saying? Up. Like, hold up, think that through, cause yeah, yeah, think that through. <laughs> you know you some bullshit. Cause we used so used to reacting. Yeah. And a reaction come from what you didn't put in you. Real shit. Right. You feel me? And and so you, and and, I, and I'm still a, like I'm still in the growing process. You know what I'm saying? Like I still got the shovel. <laughs> you feel me? Like I ain't threw that motherfucker to the side. I'm Real still shit. digging some shit out. You feel Real me? shit. Because the 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 better the more you learn about yourself, the more you get to realize your traumas. You feel exactly. me? Your childhood traumas, like or your relationship traumas. Or or how you, or why I shit and I don't trust this nigga like no nah, this nigga might be able to be trusted, but the streets didn't tell me something. I, I'm gonna tell you this man. My daddy put me when I was a kid. My daddy put me in a tree. He put a backpack. You know when we was kids, you had the GI Joe man. You wrap around, throw him in the air. The motherfuckers turn into parachutes. My daddy <clears throat> put a backpack on me. Put a string at the bottom of the backpack. Told me to climb up the tree. Jump out the tree. Pull the string. Parachute gonna come out. You gonna float to the ground. I jump. Pull the string, hit the ground, start crying. And nigga say, don't never trust me or nobody. <laughs> trust him right there for the rest of my life is fucked up. I'm trying to, st- I'm trying to, fi- I'm trying to fix this thing. I'm trying, listen though, I'm going to tell you how it go. I, the nigga catch me on my grandma's house a year later. <coughs> said, nigga, get down, we'll beat your ass. He said, matter of fact, nigga, come here, jump. I'm going to catch you, nigga. I'm about to beat your ass. So I, give me I one. jumped, that nigga walked off. Mm. When I jumped, when he went like this and I jumped, the nigga walked off. He said, I told you a dumb ass don't ever trust nobody. Mm. But you can't live your whole life that way. You feel me? So now it's like you got to figure out if somebody really deserves your trust. You feel me? Because mm. you don't want to deal with everybody that you love from an untrustful point because somebody else taught you that you shouldn't trust nobody. No, nah, nigga, the person I shouldn't have been trusting was you. Mm-hmm. And now you done fucking me up to think I shouldn't trust everybody else Cause you don't want me to look at you different than I look at everybody else You want me to see you from the same lenses So you gonna create the lenses of no trust Nah that's mm-hmm. just like people people who got them fake love you yeah. Reason why they be so um, blocking of other people Every, loving you Because they don't because want you to they don't want what look like. see what real, real love, love look is like. that's what I'm You saying. know what I'm saying Like yeah. a motherfucker that truly love you yeah. don't matter don't don't care about releasing you Right Cause they know they love you Like I don't right. care who you be friends right. with right. I don't right. care who you Whatever, because they gonna, I, I know what me. I get. They gonna, yeah, I love you. So all you're going to do is, for my mother, get something similar to what I give you. Thank you. But then if not, you're going to be like, oh, nigga, you don't love me, because this is what love look like now. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So trust, mm-hmm. you want to meet, you want to create me a, 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 to look at you, to look at everybody the same way I should be looking at you. Real shit. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? By, so you created me not to trust people, and then you don't know that affect you when you get older. Like, nigga, I don't trust people. I'll be like, nigga, I don't. now I'll be like, let me wait till they do something for me not to trust them. Mm. Instead of going in Because When you don't trust somebody You don't give them The opportunity To be the best version Of them for you You feel me You holding them back Because you ain't Letting them get close enough To trust you 
know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's kind of like my story, man. You know, I appreciate y'all having me on there. The gems. The game, the wisdom. We appreciate it. Show. Make sure you follow Uncle on that Instagram. <laughs> and make sure you check us out. Triple Salute. Salute. Fat Week Salute. 2024. Salute. This is a Big Facts Network exclusive.